You alright? You're back to the backwards too? Yeah. You laugh. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> so I'm gonna pass these around so you guys can look at them. Please do not lose them. I need to. I'm passing four around. I need to get four back. <laughs> so I'll do these two this way. You know what? And these two that way. So what I'm passing around this way, the big ring, is my team championship ring from UCLA in 2010. The little one is an, in, the smaller one is an individual championship for floor the same year. What I'm passing that way is a Pac-10. The silver one is the Pac-10 championship ring. And the gold one is an academic ring for being at UCLA and graduating in athletics but academics as well. Okay. <laughs> so I started gymnastics when I was nine. I started in Corona at Gymnastics Pacifica. You guys probably don't know what gym that is anymore. You've heard of it? That's where I started. Gymnastics Pacifica. Um, so I'm gonna tell you the first part of my story because I think it will help you guys a little bit. When I started, I started in Saturday classes. Um, and I think I did Saturday classes for three weeks and then they were coming up with new routines, compulsory routines, so my coach wanted me to join the team. And I remember when he told me, I went to my mom and I cried and I told her, I don't wanna leave my friends. I don't want to leave my friends behind that I'm doing Saturday classes with to move up to the team. So I was willing to not move up and not go anywhere to stay with my friends. But after talking to my mom a little bit and figuring it out, she's like, you can still be their friend. You're just going to move up and not be training with them anymore. And it still happened. I was able to be their friend, but I was just moving up ahead of them, which is okay. Because everyone is good at different things. And then after that, I started, I trained level four. I did level four and level five that season. And then the next year I did level six in, from September to December or November. And then in January I competed level seven. So I did level six and level seven the same year. That's, they used to do that a lot when, a lot of people skip level six now. I was 10 when I did level six and seven. <laughs> and then I started when I was nine. And then after I did level seven, I did level eight when I was 11. Pass them around that way so that everyone can see them. Okay. Um, I did level eight. And then the next year I did level nine. So I did about, a, I did two years, two levels one year and then I did a year in every other level basically. So I did level eight after that when I was 11. Then level nine. I did when I was 12, but right, I believe before season, soon before season, I hurt my foot. I fell on a back handspring layout on the low beam and I fractured my foot. So that was my very first injury. I was in a cast for six to eight weeks-ish. And then I came back slowly with the doctor's permission. I had to listen to the doctors. By the way, I'm gonna tell you all, I was really bad at listening to the doctor. I soon learned, <laughs> I soon learned, that's why I tell you guys, listen to what the doctor says, you have to listen to your body because... Sometimes they overreact a little. Yeah. 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 Like, like, don't, like, don't, go. don't go anywhere in your gym. Don't go. Just don't okay. walk. I'll get, I'll get, I'll get to that part in my story. Don't, don't do it. I will get to that part. So that was my first injury. Then after that, I made it to Nationals, my Westerns, level 9. I didn't in place. It's okay. It's okay. It's but yeah, I remember at that meet, I told my dad, it's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen again. I was so upset that I didn't place. I, it was a good meet for me, but I just wasn't where I needed to be gymnastically. So, I... Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. So after that, we started talking to my coaches, and we realized basically that I needed to I needed to change gyms. So I went down to Sega. I tried a few different gyms out. Sega. So I. Do you know a girl named Cammy? I do know Cammy. That's my um. That's my mom's friend's niece. Nice. That's my sister. Oh, I yes. Know Cammy. Oh, I, I, 
my coaches didn't tell me to switch gyms. My parents and I decided that it was time for me to switch gyms. I didn't want to <laughs> because I wasn't able to progress anymore where I was. I also didn't want to change then because I didn't want to leave my friends. But it ended up being a good decision. So I went to Sega. And when I got to Sega, they changed everything I did. Because I lived in Corona. This was really far. This is like an hour and a half from where I live. From where I grew up. Where I live now. Yeah. So then I went. I'm going to sit down. Okay. I'm okay. so kind of tired. Um, so then... When I got to Sega, they changed everything I did. I think I went home to my mom. Oh my God, you guys are like, out of here like animals. Wow. <laughs> so when I went, I came home every night and told my mom, they're changing everything I do. Every single thing I do, they're changing my form, the way I do it. She's like, it's okay, it's gonna be for the better. And it was. So when I got there, I ended up competing level nine again. I have one of these two. Cool. So I competed level nine again, but all of my skills were very different. And I was a lot cleaner and I scored a lot better because my skills were different and cleaner. So that year I won state, all four events in all around. Regionals the same and then nationals. Then nationals I won everything except for B. I came in second on oh, my teammate. Oh, my God. teammate came in first, and that was really cool. So then I did level ten, um, and I made it to nationals that year. And I'm gonna tell you a story about that because the day before, or two days before, I was supposed to leave to go to nationals. I got really sick. I was throwing up. I got stomach flu, all of the above, and I was in the hospital for a day. But I still went <laughs> because I felt like I needed to. And I, I at least went because we already had the flights and all of that to see what I could do. It, like, to me, it's worth trying at least to see where you can go. If you don't make it, then okay. But at least for me, I know I tried. Did and you I, have the chicken pox? I've never had the chicken pox. <laughs> um, so that's for me. That year, I won bars at nationals. Wow. wow! Then I tried to go elite. Um, after that, I tried to go elite after that, and I was training and all of that. And for elite, you have to do compulsory routines and optional yeah. routines mm -hmm. to qualify. So I qualified compulsory. I did not qualify optional. I tried. I tried twice. I didn't qualify. And so I know nobody's perfect. <laughs> Nobody is perfect. So I kept trying and then eventually I, I was doing a skill and I, I was having back pain. And first for a long time I didn't say anything about my back pain which is why I'm on you guys so much about telling me about your pain. Because I had back pain that okay. slowly got worse and I didn't tell anyone until it was really bad. Yeah. And so you need to let somebody know even gradually so we can help you take care of it. So I didn't tell anybody, then every once in a while I'd like take two weeks off here and then come back. But it just didn't work. One day I hit my chin. I like I think something happened where it affected my back and I came back and I just I couldn't walk because it hurt so bad. So I I went to the doctor, I found out I fractured my back. Um, I was for about four and a half months. I was allowed to only ride the bike, to do conditioning and a lot of stretching. I was not flexible when I became a gymnast because when I was born, I was born with dislocated hips, so my hips were really tight. So I had to work really hard at being flexible. And so when I fractured my back, I did over splits on two blocks, two minutes, like three times a day, front leg and back leg up because I knew that's what I needed to work on. And I had a horrible toe point. My toe point sucked. So I had people sit on my feet under a block for like 10 minutes three times a day because that's we had seven hour practices and that's what I could do so I did conditioning a lot of stretching and some cardio on a bike so I just did what I could at the time to get myself better and get myself back to where I could be so I came back and I my coaches decided that it would be better because I need I my goal was to get a college scholarship so 
I decided it was best for me to do level 10 again so that I could be looked at at college coaches and all of that. So I did level 10. Um, I made it to nationals. I did my first event. My first event was beam. I straddled the beam on my first skill on switch league. And I continued and I still scored well because I stuck everything else to my routine, which is why it's very, very, very important that you're qualifying me. So I qualified and then there's classics, which I think is now, is it called the Nazi League? I don't know what it's called now. But it's classics to qualify for U.S. championships, which is that big meet where everyone qualifies for Olympic trials. How much are Visa champions? to classics and from there I qualified to championships and my skill level wasn't nearly as hard as a lot of the other girls because I was coming back from an injury still but I was very consistent and because I was consistent and I hit we competed two nights so you compete two nights at championships I hit seven for eight events and because I did that I was able to still be in the top 12 is it top 12 that make the team it's the top 12, but it's because of consistency, not because I had the skill level as everybody else. So I made the U.S. national team. And so that later on that year, I was going to be able to go to camps to be able to qualify to compete for the U.S. So I was training, getting harder skills. I had harder skills and harder routines. And then four days before I was supposed to go to camp, I tore my Achilles, my first one. And so I was done, and by that point I had also committed to go to UCLA, and I was really, really nervous that she wasn't going to take me, but she still decided to. And so I worked really hard to come back from my injury. From the whole part about the doctor not letting you come to the gym, when I tore my Achilles, my doctor said you cannot step foot in that gym for six months. And what did you do? I didn't go in the gym for six months. I was in. Hi. I, I did not go in the gym for at least four months because I think I progressed a little faster than I was supposed to. So at least four months I didn't go in the gym because I wasn't allowed to and I knew I needed to listen to the doctor. So I was in physical therapy four times a week for about six hours because that that's where I did my conditioning. I kept my. You have to keep conditioning. So I did conditioning plus all the rehab stuff. Then, after that I came back and I tried to come back and still compete because, and be on the national team and make visas again, but I didn't make it because I was pushing myself too fast. And my ankle, my ankle of the Achilles that I had torn was really starting to bother me and I wasn't doing my skills to the, I was compensating for it basically. I wasn't doing my skills to the best of my ability because I was trying to come back too fast. So I decided I wasn't going to try and come back and go elite. I was just going to go to college. And so I took a little bit of time off before I went to college. And I came to UCLA as a freshman. And I was ready to go because I had been training a lot. And then so I went home for Thanksgiving break. And I was in a car accident because I fell asleep driving. So I hit a tree. And the tree was like this big. But good thing the tree was there because my car jumped the curb and behind the tree was a brick wall. So they told me it'll come back, the feeling will come back. I got back to UCLA and they were saying, okay, we'll keep watching it. I just couldn't, I couldn't pull my toe up like this. And I was tripping over my feet and we couldn't figure out why. And eventually one day the, one of the doctors was just standing back and watching and he's like, you need to go see a foot specialist because you tore See this tendon that's moving my toe? It's called your extensor hallux longus. I cut that in the accident, but they didn't catch it. So they had already sewn me all the way back up, but sewn me up with the torn tendon. So I went to the specialist and he told me it was a good thing I came in when I did, but he couldn't guarantee me anything. Who knew to do gymnastics again? So I didn't move it. It took a long time to come back from it. I had to do toe rehab, which is really funny and really weird, but that's what I had to do. <laughs> I had a hole in my foot for a long time. It was a long, it was a long recovery, but eventually I, I came back. I was in a cast, I was in a boot, I was in a lot of different stuff. I wasn't allowed to walk on it. The trainer's name was Lorita. She was my best friend by the end of college because I spent so much time in the training room with her. I think I remember Lorita. Yes. <laughs> Lorita's been there a long time. So then I came back, I competed, 
um, all the way through season, and I was really excited. And then at our last home meet, I tore my other Achilles. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, you look like that. Oh, wait, didn't you see someone sit on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. What? Freshman year? What time did you pull her? I never so want to so 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 Can someone post it on Facebook? Okay. No. So it's on golf too. No. So, so then it's okay. after my Achilles, um, I was pissed because I had been through a crack load already. I was very, very upset, but I knew I wanted to come back. I had the first thing. My grandpa, by the way, took me to practice every single day. My grandpa lives out here, and my gym was two hours away. He took me to practice every day. And my grandpa told me, he was like, okay, maybe it's time to be done. My grandpa asked me that, my mom asked me that, and Loretta, my trainer, said, it's okay, you can be done. And I told all of them, I was very upset with all of them for asking me, and I was like, no, I'm at least gonna try. And so I tried, and I rehabbed again all summer. I came back, I did all of it. I made sure I listened to the doctor. I could, I, and I had to listen to Loretta because Loretta was the person that told me what I could do and couldn't do. If I didn't listen to Loretta, I was not gonna compete. So I listened to Loretta, I listened to the doctors, and I came back, and I competed, and I competed bigger. I started competing the same path as I was doing in club, level 10 and elite, again, like on floor and everything. And, I, that was the, 2009, 2010, we competed again, and I, I made it through an entire season first, 2009, 2010, was the year we won nationals. And I also won an individual title. Mind you, I was a nursing major, because you all, you all know I'm a nurse, right? Yeah. yeah. I did nursing school while I was doing gymnastics. So we trained in the morning for four hours, then after that we would go to class, but my 2010 when we won, because of my nursing schedule, I'd only practice two hours, then go to class, or I'd come in. We had practice from 8 to 12. I would come in at 7, practice until 9, go to class, then come back. Bless you. So it's really, really important that you do well in school, too. Not for college, but also for the rest of your life, for your job. Gymnastics is awesome and it's great, but you need to get your education. It is very, very, very important. Very important, especially in getting jobs now. And after that was my last year in college. Um, we came in second as a team at Nationals and I came in second on floor. And all that time I was doing clinicals. So I was doing three 12 hour shifts, plus going to school, plus practicing, and all of that. And that was my last year. And I told some of you last night, um, for my senior meet, the very last meet that I competed at home at UCLA, I cried. I cried a lot. I love gymnastics. That's why I'm here with you guys. I love, love, love gymnastics. I cried the night before the meet. I cried driving to the meet. I cried during the meet. I cried after the meet. I cried after nationals. I cried for almost a month after I was done with gymnastics because I love gymnastics that much. So that's why I push you guys because I know you guys can be great. And I love gymnastics so much that I want to see you guys do really, really well. <laughs> and that's my story. Do you guys have any questions about anything? I know. I had a 3.0. When I graduated, I want to say I graduated with a 3.4 or something like that. Yeah. So it took me a minute to figure out the study habits. I studied all the time, but I didn't always study the right thing. So it's really important to figure out when you need to study, how much you need to study, and what you need to study. Because you can't read all the stuff they give you. Because they give you books on top of books on top of books and notes. You cannot read it all. It's not possible. So you need to choose, pick and choose and figure out what the important stuff is. What, what, don't where did you get on your SATs? I don't remember. My oh, SATs were 20. different because the new, there's no, a new SAT. Like yeah, yeah, then I didn't take the new one. When they have lectures, you have to do right Some, le some professors have lectures where they just talk and you take notes and, or they write on the board. Some professors have um, slides. And, they, and you can print the slides from the um, lecture. And a lot of my nursing classes were like that. So I could print the slides and just write extra notes on the slides, which helped because they had everything written down. What's up? Um, so you're saying when you had every injury, you were always positive? 
Um, <laughs> you sound so positive this time. I will say after, the for, after my first Achilles, for my back, I was just really, really upset. And it hurt a lot. It hurt a lot, a lot, a lot. And my mom told me to remember the pain I was in and do not ever let anyone push me past the pain I was in. And I, it came to a point where I, my coach told me to do something that I knew was going to hurt my back. And, it, and I, my physical therapist and my doctor told me, do not do it. And if it was going to hurt, not to do it. He told me, it was a few months after I had come back and everything, and he, my coach wanted me to do it, and he said, if you can't do it, then you can leave. I got up and walked out that day. I got kicked out of the gym that day, but it was because I knew that it was going to cause me that pain I was in. Before I fractured my back and had to wear that back brace, I wasn't willing to go back to that pain again. So, so I had to I had to make a decision and if it was between being kicked out of the gym and being in that pain because I have one back I only get one back it's my body that I have to live with for the rest of my life there are things you can push through and I think your coaches will know what to push you through but at the same time you have to be smart and listen to your body uh, on the other hand being positive after I learned injuries were a lesson in patience for me because I got frustrated when I wasn't coming back fast enough. I got really, really frustrated when I wasn't coming back fast enough. I, like, I was really, really I, there were times I would get in my car and cry on the way home because I was so upset I wasn't coming back fast enough. But after my last Achilles injury, everyone asked me how I could be so positive and I started realizing everything happens for a reason. And for me, every mo everyone may not believe this, I, I believe God allows everything to happen for a reason. And I now know what the reason is. Back then, I didn't know. Two years later, I won a national championship. I didn't know that was going to happen after that. There's a reason. And the, also the reason is for me to share with you guys, to help you through your injuries, to help you through your workout, all of that. So I do believe everything happens for a reason. Thank you for the You're welcome. Any other questions? What's up? Uh, if you had work out for like 9 to 12 uh -huh. like what time did you go to like school school it depended on whatever what time my classes were there were, I remember my freshman year Fridays I didn't have class so we would practice from 8 to 12 we'd have or from 8 to 11 we'd have weights from 11 to 12 um, some days I would have class from 2 to 5 some days I'd have class from 1 to 3 and then I have the rest of the afternoon. Well, we had to do tutoring. I had to eat dinner and eat lunch, and I had to study. You also, it's time management in college. You have to figure out when you're going to study, when you're going to eat, when you're going to hang out with your friends. If it's more important to hang out with your friends or to study, you have to learn to eat well on your own. You have to learn to cardio on your own. So you have to, you also need to find good friends. You have to find good friends that are going to support you in what you do. They're not going to say, oh, you have to go do that. You have to go study. You shouldn't study. You should hang out with me and go to a party. That's not a good friend. You need to have a good friend that's going to say, oh, I'll study with you. Oh, I'll go cardio with you. Oh, I'll eat well with you. I won't eat this ice cream because I'm going to eat this carrot with you. Those are good friends. Elena, I think your mom wants you to. That's cool. Can you, like, choose your roommates? Freshman year, we weren't allowed to. She always, our Ms. Val always get paired us with a swimmer. My freshman year, we weren't allowed to choose our roommates. Ms. Val chose our roommates. She always gave us a swimmer. Why? Maybe because she. That's not at every school. Maybe because if you like see the gymnast, like it'll be I will say, annoying. Like if, if I you, saw like. I agree with that. If you see, night. you're with your teammates at practice. You're with yeah. them before practice because we had to go to the training room, and eat with them, you practice with them, you're in classes with them. So to go home and live with them, yeah, you can hang out with them, but you don't have to go home and be with them all the time. Yeah, That's like, being with somebody 24/7. Like, are you sure I finished my series? <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, it's be like. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 I think I actually might have, like, I might have your autograph. Like, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you probably do. In my <laughs> room. I'm like, you're welcome. Okay, I'll, I'll remember that. Okay. Uh, I was I don't think Bye. 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 Um, Bye. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome. You said you were going shopping, right? Yeah. Oh. I don't see my hair. Shopping? You're going shopping right now? Yeah. No, I'm going grocery shopping. Oh. oh I, was I know that uh, I, I was looking over some old 
clips from 2011. You were still competing, right? It was mm -hmm. senior year? That was my last year. Yeah, and uh, so I've got your bars and floor and stuff, and Thea's with me, and she, really? you can hear her going like, like oozing on. <laughs> you know, watching awesome. your routine, like, like your floor music and stuff. Just, I'll, I'll have to post those in 